10.24 on a Friday, the Black Lives Matter movement has turned the spotlight on every part of society. For filmmaker Etienne Cabuebo, it also represents a chance to change the way we think about comic superheroes. Etienne was born in the Democratic Republic of Congo and moved to Scotland as a refugee aged 19. He's drawn on his own experience to create Scotland's first ever black superhero in the hope that it will inspire others and break down barriers. Etienne joins me now. Morning, welcome to BBC Radio Scotland. Morning, it's good, good to, have, to have me alive with you guys. Yeah, <laughs> really happy to speak to you. Where did the idea come from for this? Uh, because obviously I'm a filmmaker, so I've been doing a lot of short films and uh, about 2018 I did a future film. And then I was like, these certain things uh, in storytelling that I, I would like to tackle as a filmmaker, but because of budget constraints and uh, finding the right people to sponsor uh, big films, I was like, the best way to go about this would be a comic book, because it was a little cheaper. I could gra- graphically sh- you know, express myself visually with the story I'm trying to convey to the people. Uh, it's called Beats of War. Why? Yes. Uh, Beats of War. So, Beats of War is based on this character, DJ Eat, who comes from space. Uh, and where he comes from, that planet has no music. So, he comes into Scotland and realizes this, what we call music, which he does not have from his planet. And he falls in love. So, music has kind of started changing his way of life and connecting with humans. So, that's where you find the word beats from beats, uh, uh, which we use to create uh, music, and then war, him fighting crime and all that, uh, based in the story. Now, he, he's the, the superhero at the centre of this, Etienne, but, but Scotland, Glasgow's also kind of the star of this too, isn't it? Yeah, I just felt like, because obviously I, I, I got here when I'm like, I'm at teenage years and, you know, I've grown to be a mature man here. So I've had my experiences living in Scotland, both good and bad. So I was like, I think Glasgow, it would be really super cool to have Glasgow as the playground. Because I've seen a lot of movies from Hollywood come here and they change traffic lights. They try to make us look, uh, make Glasgow look like it's New York or Philadelphia. I was like, you know, I feel like having the iconic look of Glasgow with tra- without trying to change then exterior photography, I think, would be really uh, paramount in, in this comic book. You've had quite a life already coming to Scotland as a refugee aged 19. What experiences have you drawn on for the comic book and for the central character? Um, I'll start with the negative, obviously. But, like, there's times when, when I was living in Scotland and then you could go to a shop and then they could ask, like, somebody, some sort of security person to follow you around, like, as if you're going to steal something from the shop. Or they follow you around, it's like, excuse me, sir, can you afford this? I'm like, yeah, I can afford it. So I'm in the shop. And then we had people throwing stones at our house a couple of times. I, I met a couple of few people calling me names in the streets in Glasgow. But I've also made some really good friends from Scotland through college and university and obviously just kind of experienced those two worlds. I wanted to kind of tell my story through those experiences and comic book was my really go-to. And when I called my friends, uh, Gary, who's the production designer on the project, he's like, Etienne, this is real awesome. Let's go for it. So it's a bit about that outsider thing, isn't it, Etienne? It's a bit about for your central character and drawing on what you've experienced about trying to fit in. Yes, yes, because obviously living in Scotland, I've had like a lot of challenges. And obviously there's things you look at on TV, like news, and there's nothing you can do, do about it. But if you can tell these stories uh, through comic books, I mean, comic books is such a big thing. Comic books are the first way or novels ways to inspire people and change people's way of thinking, starting from the young generation to the future generations as well that are yet to come. And even older people read comic books. So it's kind of like changing people's perspective perceptions towards you know okay there's a black superhero too in our city so it's cool it creates that sort of balance and it's something that we really need right now do you know what else you spotted a big gap in the market for this because they are yes. few and far between black comic superheroes why is that I don't know. So we lack representation, obviously. It would be good, like, for whoever is listening, big studios, producers. We need more superheroes. The only big franchise we know about is Black Panther. Other black superheroes, like in Marvel and DC, they're just kind of limited. They don't get a full flood to be to make big films. But I think the biggest uh, people that are trying to do something about it is Netflix. They've started doing some black superheroes. It's kind of starting to come up. But we still need some big 
big bastards, you know, shot in Scotland. I mean, like, you know, people coming in Scotland and showing the whole film here, I think it would be really iconic. And this is a time, you know, with what's going on, you know, releasing this comic book. I think it's, it's important for people to look onto this and check it out. A lot of people who've read it, they'll be like, whoa, this is really awesome, you know, and they're excited about it. Um, let me talk more about that. Stay with me, Etienne. Uh, mm -hmm. Shah Nazir is with me as well, founder of BHP Comics, an independent company. Changing the way graphic novels reflect society. Shah, good morning. Good morning. I did. Uh, so great to hear about Scotland's first black comic superhero. How diverse is the comic scene at the moment? Well, it, it's not diverse. I think that's I think that's the thing, and um, I think what what Etienne's doing is exactly what we want to see, and exactly the kind of influence that we want to be able to kind of have in the kind of in the graphic novel and the kind of and the publishing scene particularly. Um, but it's it's not diverse at all at the moment, and and it and it's changed a little bit over the past kind of five or six years. Um, you know, through through two different uh, there's two different lines of that. There's the the kind of corporate companies, the kind of Marvels and DCs, and, and what they're doing, and there's also the kind of what you would what we what you would refer to as the indies and the kind of the independents and the and the small publishers and the the smaller kind of creators like like Etienne, people who are who are changing and making their own voice heard. Um, and it's and it's a lot of what's happening is happening at that level. And is, um, is and Black working its way. Is, is the Black Lives Matter movement a, a, a key turning point in this, Shah, do you think? Because, you know, it's driving these conversations and it's making these big brands take a look at themselves. Sure. I, I mean, I think there I think there is an element of that. And I think there's definitely, within some of those brands, they're trying to look at, uh, what it is they're doing and they have been you know for example with marvel and dc they have been trying over the past few years they do have marvel kind of has a, a slightly broader mix of diversity within its within its kind of character set but a lot of the characters that they had which were characters that are or people of color um or diverse from diverse backgrounds, LGBTQ plus. They're, they're they're characters which were probably kind of coming back from the seventies, and they were sort of, in in many cases, not B list characters. They're like C and D list characters, you know. Um, so they're to be able to take them, bring them forward, and, and make them a sort of a main event character. You've got a lot of work to do to put them over, you know. I think the great thing with people like Black Panther and um, like Falcon. Falcon was more of a B character. He was always a B character to Captain America. Um, and that kind of helps put him over. Um, but to be able to, to, to kind of look forward and think, you know, because of the success, rightly so, the success of the Black Panther movie, Marvel have gone, let's let's put Falcon in his own TV show and he's going to be the main character along with uh, the Winter Soldier and stuff. So that kind of stuff is, is, um, is great to see. What do you think about what Etienne has come up with in Beats of War? I think it's fantastic. I think it's great. I think what's what's interesting and what, what what Etienne just said actually about his own kind of real life experience is that there's a, there's an echoing that's happening, and the echoing is it's almost like a callback to the '60s with with, with particularly with Marvel comics because Marvel comics uh, with Spider Man um, and with the Avengers when actually Black Panther first came in and they were basically mirroring what was happening in the world at that time. Uh, but Spider-Man particularly um, was a character which was, you know, he was a normal kid, he was a normal guy, and he then had to live in this world uh, dealing with these special kind of powers. Uh, but you always, at the heart of it, are dealing with someone who's trying to just go to school and get on with their life uh, in a real place. Um, and I think what Etienne's done with, with Beats of War, um, working, with, uh, working with Gary, is that they've, they've created this a really kind of fantastic world um, done the great thing of putting it in a place ultimately putting it in a place that people understand so there's already a lot of especially when you're small press right and when you're doing it yourself if you're Mar if you're marvel in dc this is easy right it's absolutely easy you have hundreds of resources if you are a single guy like etienne is with a couple of people are working around him to help make something it's really hard it's really hard to get your voice heard 
right? The fact that he's on here today, you guys have paid some attention. Remember, you're mainly doing that because it's it's a black character made in Scotland, right? And those are all the great things that make and push that book forward. And also, it's a great story. I read it this morning. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to read the next one, yeah. It looks amazing. And it is a first uh, as well. Comic books have always been about, you know, fighting the big challenges in life. Yeah. Do you think, is COVID going to pop up in comic life, do you think? Over the well, it, it, uh, I mean, it already has. And it has successes and failures already <laughs> within, within that. Um, there, there are some people that have, uh, there, I think there was a COVID e um, sort of anthology that came out a, a, a few, a couple of weeks back, maybe. And there's another one that's coming out uh, later in the year with people doing sort of short stories um, or stories of isolation, you know, and bringing out stories of isolation. Um, but really, it, that's not the story that I'm interested in. I mean, the story that I'm interested in is, is, is really where where we're coming from right now in terms of uh, of a of a democratic society across across the world and particularly in the West and particularly how we're we're perceiving uh, people that are around us um, and to have a much more equal society and to 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 echo what Etienne said is comics allow us to do a real simple thing. All right, and that's one of the things that I do with the books that we make is that we don't make superhero comics. We make kind of genre-based books and we make non-fiction books as well um, in graphic form. But the simple thing that we're doing is we're investing in working with people of color uh, and with diverse kinds of people making the books and the kinds of content that we're, that we're putting out and the people that are in those books is we're just doing little small steps, little tiny steps of, you know, we've got the power to be able to, to make whatever we want and we have the power to, to have the different kinds of characters and different kinds of people that reflect the world that we live in. You know, when I was um, sort of, you know, 10 or 12, there was there was very little for me to, to, to look at as a comic and kind of go, I recognize that person, that's a person that is mirroring me as a brown person, you know? The only person I could, that could, it was even close to that actually was someone like Black Panther, you know? Um, so, and, and you could sort of ask, stop for a second, you could ask yourself, you know, within, within comics uh, as a form, just, even in, just in the UK, you know, name one black or brown character and you can't. That's, you know, it's, you could name probably Judge Dredd or you could say Dennis the Menace or Desperate Dan or, you know, maybe Miracle Man. And then you're sort of like scarpering around but, and it's basic and it's basically like an, an anamorphic character is better known. Yeah, uh, uh, but from small steps comes that big change. Just quickly to finish with you, Etienne, on this, what do you hope is going to happen with Beats of War and, uh, and this story and Scotland's first black superhero? How big do you want to take this? Uh, to be honest with you, I mean, I want to take it to the part where I can do a film right now. I'm uh, working with a friend of mine to just develop, like, you know, a normal feature film that is based on the story before the superhero ever comes. So I want to take it to the next level. I wanted to push it uh, to, to maybe up to five issues. So obviously next year we're going to have another one coming out that was going to follow up on the issue one. So I want it to be turned into a movie eventually in future. Obviously the way uh, comics were released back in the day, things were quite slow but now because of technology and we have got access to social media things go faster than we think and obviously yeah that's the dream to kind of get into made into a movie or tv show and i'm pretty excited about yeah. the whole journey and people behind it well good luck to you uh fascinating scotland's first black superhero all down to that man etienne kubwebo thank you so much for your time this morning 